this passage in Luke chapter 6, verses 20 to 26, has been called the Beatitudes of Luke uh, with the corresponding woes. So blessed are you and woe to you. The woes start here and take up verses 24 to 26 and the blessings or beatitudes are here. We usually think of the beatitudes as coming from Matthew 5, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, etc. This is Luke's um, report, probably of a different situation where Jesus spoke similar words. He says, blessed are you poor. He doesn't say poor in spirit. And I just want to suggest as we look at the structure of the whole, that you not try to force them to mean the same thing as though Jesus could only mean one thing when he spoke in two different ways about the blessings. So let's be very careful not to say what Matthew means by poor in spirit is what Luke here reporting Jesus means by poor. Treat each section of the gospel according to its own context, and you'll be a lot closer to the truth, I think, than if you try to press them together to mean the same thing. To be different is not to be contradictory. So, Father, as we, as we look at these verses and try to understand the, the blessings that he pronounces and the woes that he pronounces, grant that we would be very careful, very alert, very observant, very wise in the way we put this together so that we understand how we might enjoy the blessing and avoid the cursing that's in this text. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what I want to do in this session, I think we'll spend three sessions on this passage, is to simply get the overall structure. So let's read it together, and I'll point out the structure as we go, and then we can look at details from that larger structural understanding. Jesus lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy for. So we underlined hungry here and poor here and weeping here. We probably should underline here. They hate you. They exclude you. They revile you. They spurn you as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day for, behold, your reward is great in heaven for, supporting this for, why is your reward great in heaven? An added confirmation, because their fathers did the same to the prophets, and we know that the prophets are going to be rewarded for this. End of the blessings. So that's the first unit. The blessings, the beatitudes. Now, corresponding to these four, one, two, three, four blessings come four woes. But woe to you who are rich for. So rich corresponds to poor. And this blessing corresponds to this woe. For you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for 
now. You shall be hungry. And this fool here corresponds to this hungry here. And this now corresponds to this now. I won't draw the line. It'll get too messy if we do that. And this blessedness corresponds to this woe. Third, woe to you who laugh now. Four, you shall mourn and weep. And this laughing now corresponds to number three up here, weeping. And this woe here corresponds to this blessing. Fourth, woe to you when all people speak well of you. For so their fathers did to the prophets. And this speaking well corresponds to this excluding and reviling and hating. And this for corresponds to that argument. For great is your reward in heaven. And this being so their fathers did to the prophets, meaning you put yourself in the class of false prophets if you are spoken well of all the time and never slandered. So there's the general structure of the whole with those now and later, two times in both cases. Now let's step back and make some observations. These blessings are pronounced to the disciples and to the disciples the warnings of the woes. That's the first observation. These are blessings not pronounced on the poor in general. Like everybody who's poor has the kingdom. If you took it like that, all poor people belong in the kingdom of God. You would have haters of God in many cases in the kingdom of God. That's not the point. The point is these are disciples and they happen perhaps to be poor. They happen to be hungry. They happen to be weeping. And they happen to be hated. And he's addressing, well, how should they feel about that? How should they think about that? So that word disciples there is all important, lest we generalize about the poor and about the hungry and about the weeping in a naive, simplistic way. A second observation. It says, rejoice in that day. He didn't say that with regard to the other three blessings, but he could have. Here he says, blessed, number four, blessed are you when people hate you. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. And then he gives the ground. He could do the same thing here. He could say, blessed are you who are poor. Rejoice in that day for yours is the kingdom. Or blessed are you who are hungry now. Rejoice in that day, for you shall be satisfied, and, he, and, and so on. But he does it here. I'm not sure why, except that this is drawn out in a more painful way, perhaps, to be hated, to be excluded, to be reviled, to be spurned. You would think that's going to make you absolutely miserable if everybody views you that way. And so he feels, no, no, I've got to correct that impression. Rejoice in that day. In fact, he goes so far as to say leap for joy. I mean, this is just over the top amazing that he would say to us under the condition of being hated and reviled and excluded and spurned as evil because of Jesus, that he would say leap for joy. When that happens, that's just amazing to me. So that's a third or second observation. Here's a third observation. In verse 26, he says, Woe to you when all people speak well of you, which is the negative counterpart of blessed are you when they hate you and 
and exclude you and revile you. Woe to you when they speak well of you. And in, and there's nothing corresponding to this. Rejoice in that day. He doesn't say, weep in that day. For so their fathers did to the prophets. He could have, but perhaps he didn't because he's already said, you're going to mourn and weep. At least noticing the kinds of non-parallels amidst the parallels sometimes tips you off to various emphases. Here's a fourth observation. The reward promised to the first blessing is yours is the kingdom of God. So blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of God. What's the counterpart to that? The counterpart is did I put two here when I meant one? Okay. <laughs> That's supposed to be a one right there. Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. It's interesting. He, he doesn't make a promise there, like you're going to go to hell or you're going to be poor someday, which he could have said. Instead, he says, woe to you who are rich now, because that's what you get. This, the, just as we is, this is not just future, yours is presently, in your poverty, you are the beneficiaries of the kingdom. Jesus is your king. You are rightful heirs of all that the kingdom of God is. All that the king can do for you, he is doing for you for your good right now, even in the midst of, of poverty and weeping and slander. And so similarly here, when he says, woe to you who are rich, he says, what is your portion right now? That's it. You get it. Riches. You want it, you get it. Then in the end, that's all. Yours is the consolation. You have received your consolation. This is what you get, and that will be the end of it. So what's the, what's the main point before we look at some details next time? The main point is not that poverty, poverty and hunger and weeping and being hated are the, the way you become blessed, the means of, of blessing, the qualification you meet in order to get the blessing. That's not the point here. That might be the point in Matthew's form, where Matthew says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. It may be that in this case, Jesus meant there's a certain quality of spirit which sets you up to be a rightful recipient of this blessing. That's not the point here. Jesus is not saying, everybody, uh, if you want to be blessed, you better be poor. If you want to be blessed, you better not have any food. If you want to be blessed, you better be a weeper and not have any joy. If you want to be blessed, you better get yourself hated. That's not the point. The point is many disciples are in fact poor. How should you think about it? Think that yours is the kingdom. Many disciples are in fact hungry. How should you think about it? you will someday get the reward of satisfaction. Many disciples are now weeping in all kinds of difficulties and pressures and afflictions. How should you think about it? The day is coming when that's all going to be passed and you're going to laugh and so on. The point of this text is not to give us qualifications for how to receive the blessing. The point is to say, you are my disciples and therefore you are are blessed. You are following me. You are trusting me. Therefore, whether you are poor, whether you're hungry, whether you're weeping, whether you're hated, you are blessed for all these reasons. We're going to look at some details next time and that are, that are very important to keep us from misunderstanding. Like, what, what are we to make of the fact that he pronounces a woe on being full or a woe on those who are laughing. Is it wrong to laugh? That's where we're going next time.